lined up for our viewers and of course our guests this evening. And on that note, let's jump into our next session, which is on creating sustainable water solutions, community engagement being the key. And joining us for this set session, we have Mr. Varun Sridharan, founder and CEO, Green Environment Innovation and Marketing India Private Limited. We also have with us Mr. Vinay Chattaraju, co-founder, Krishnam Technologies. We also have with us Ms. Vanita Mohan, Chairman of Precall and founder of NGO Sirutuli. And moderating this session, we have Mr. Venkat Kamalakar, who is the co-founder of Garfi Biosciences. I'm going to request our moderator to kindly take forward. Thank you, Samina, and good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining, despite it being a, a, a big day. As a kid, I was told 70% of the earth surface is water, and all of us have heard about it from our teachers. But the single most and the biggest crisis that humanity is staring at today is the water scarcity. And make no mistake, water is a very complex issue with an interplay of host of factors and multi-dimensional challenges. Fortunately for me, I have a distinguished panel with impeccable credentials in the field. Before we move further, briefly about me, I've held a global mandates for some of the biggest pharma companies before co-founding Garfi Biosciences in 2007. Garfi is a boutique advisory uh, firm specializing in pharma and biotech with global footprints. Uh, Garfi focuses on mergers and acquisitions, diverse teachers, licensing of technology and products. I would now welcome my fellow panelists to briefly introduce themselves to this August gathering. Thank you. May I invite Ms. Vanita Mohan? Ma'am, you're muted. Thank you, Venkat. Um, I represent uh, Siruthuli, which in Tamil means small drops, uh, an NGO which is into eco-conservation uh, eco in this part of the country. Um, Siruthuli was started way back in uh, 2003 when Coimbatore was going through a, a, a deep crisis as far as water was concerned. Siruthuli, although it started out with water conservation, it has uh, in its fold a lot of other activities which are uh, connected with water. Uh, what I would like to share today is uh, water from two aspects. One is the rainwater that we get that, that is available for us. And the second is the sewage that we generate, which can be converted, which can be recycled and then used. These are two important uh, sources of water that we have and which is being uh, wasted to a large extent. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. Thank you, ma'am. Warren. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm the founder and uh, CEO of a company named Green Environment Innovation and Marketing India Private Limited. We are a startup, uh, you know, uh, environmental engineering company. Uh, we formed with the idea to solve water and wastewater uh, management problems in uh, residential communities industries and commercial buildings like IT parks, malls, hospitals. So uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, taken Internet of Things, IoT as an enabler to solve this problem, you know, to get more data of these infrastructure or buildings, how they use water, and then understand the problem with data and then bring up, uh, you know, I would say solutions, which obviously has to be focused on sustainability. So uh, I would like to, you know, bring in uh, my opening remarks, uh, saying that water, you know, as we all know, is a resource, but uh, today it is a commodity as well. I mean, for buying a thousand liter, buying thousand liters of water, we need to spend hundred rupees, or a bottle of water we spend ten rupees. So I think uh, today we have to look at it as a commodity where we spend money, and if that, uh, you know, hundred rupees worth water we are buying, uh, it has to be of the right quality, and you know, we should have enough quantity to have it. So sustainability is just the most important part in water. And today, you know, we, we need 135 liters per day uh, to have a very comfortable day with water. So do we have enough quantity? Do we have the right quality is the question. So that's the problem we are trying to solve. And I would like to share more details in the panel on that. Thank you. Thank you. Vinay. 
Hi, uh, this is Vinay, uh, co-founder and uh, head of uh, business, uh, heading business for Kritsnam Technologies. Uh, we are a five-year-old uh, company, uh, started from IIT Kanpur and shifted to Hyderabad uh, recently. Uh, the major uh, uh, area which we are targeting on is uh, 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 instrumentation and data-driven water management solutions. Uh, uh, in our work, uh, for, in the last five years and a couple of years before starting the organization is primarily, we have found... Uh, uh, in India, we lack a lot of data on the water resources. So, and most of the, uh, uh, the water management solutions and works has been purely a guess work. So, we are in a mission to change this uh, to bring a more of a data driven water resource management at all scales from the government level, starting from rivers, lakes, reservoirs, canals, ponds, tanks to domestic, industrial, commercial sector. So, we build various instrumentation which can give uh, reliable data uh, directly in the cloud using IoT, uh, 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 using IoT technologies, uh, which can be used for further uh, development of the solutions and analytical solutions on the top of it. Look forward to be interacting more on this. So, thank you all. Uh no, the other day I was just talking to my neighbor's kid and she's an eight-year-old. She was asking me, what do you mean by sustainable water management? Uh, I thought the best that uh, describes it, a sustainable water management is using water in a way that meets the current ecological, social, and economic needs without compromising the ability to meet those needs in the future. How simple, but it's easier said than done, as every one of us would agree. As the, uh, as the talk uh, or the discussion is aptly uh, named, the world is coming to realize that the only sustainable way to work on water is through participatory approaches that are both scalable and contextualized to communities. Like it or not, water is a local and political issue the world over. In this context, would welcome uh, brief comments and initiatives that you, my, from my fellow panelists, uh, that they have been involved in at the community levels to, and suggestions on how we could raise the community engagement and uh, take the involvement to the higher levels. Vinay, would you like to? Yeah. So, um, uh... Um, I guess this uh, the very moment I was uh, told about this uh, discussion on the sustainable uh, water management. You know, so I we, we didn't hesitate to even you know so think twice. Will, will that be something which is useful for us? Uh, uh, the participatory approach in the form of uh, you know so bringing the water uh, uh, sustainable water management is very important because if I broadly classify water into four by four matrix you know so we have quantity quality surface water groundwater all the four uh, uh, are very vast in areas you know so where if one particular organization planning to solve the complete water problem or you know so a few groups uh, if you are planning to solve fairly uh, uh, impossible task to do it so there are a lot of independent uh, individual skill set uh, and uh, 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 very deep work has done by many people across the country and across the world so if we can unite all of them together then that is where you know we can actually bring the right outcome which we are envisioning as a sustainable water management because if i work on the quantity and if i say that okay i'll ensure that uh, you know the so groundwater is sustainably managed and the quantity wise but if i don't consider about you know so the, the kind of uh, quality uh, deterioration the groundwater if which is happening that is of actually no point and on the other side if you know we have the best in the world treatment methodologies and so contamination prevention methodologies without having having focus on the quantity and there is no water you know so even though we have the fresh water but you know there is no quantity available uh, for drinking so sufficient quantity available for drinking so this is something which the four uh, uh, four points in the quadrant uh, surface ground quality and quantity has to be rightly addressed by various authorities coming together, working together, and that's how we talk about a sustainable water management. So then I believe this is where you call uh, the, the participatory approach from various stakeholders on the solution providing wise. I'm talking only from the solution providers wise. Coming from the uh, uh, the user's perspective, you know, um, uh, the, the maybe whoever they is, it could be residential, domestic, uh, the uh, industrial, commercial, or maybe we're talking about the governments who are managing large, large water bodies. 
two points which we try to uh, 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 identify could be important is uh, usually when people talk about roi you know so okay, okay fine you know so you you have a solution which is giving which is costing me 10 lakhs what's what's the roi which i'm going to get uh, uh, which is not very easy to show in the sustainable uh, 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 topics because we don't have the past data okay so if we had uh, some good data okay so this 100 such systems have been installed in the past and you know so has been running for the last 5 to 10 years i would have some data but here you don't have a data i need to make some assumptions and projections to achieve this on the other hand what we look at is we need to look at empowering people uh, by making investing in sustainability is a matter of pride you know so uh, the typical example which i usually give is come uh, carrying a plastic bag versus carrying a jute bag the people who are carrying a jute bag also carry the pride along with uh, you know with the cost which they are actually uh, invested into it so similarly anybody who is investing into some sustainable technologies you know so people you know it, it could be maybe electric vehicles or it could be anything which is you are moving more sustainability it should be celebrated it should be more uh, taken into the pride which adding with a minimum roi of course roi is important but you know if i go only with the roi it's not going to solve you know it's not going to the scalability might be very uh, slow if only roi is taken into the picture so i feel with through this participatory approaches the pride and uh, some business use case together can uh, you know uh, solve the sustainable water management problems across all the sectors is what we have been strongly believing meeta ma'am put you like to um, uh, especially your organization has been doing a lot of good work on the urban yes, urban city yeah um uh, i don't have any data i don't have any we, we just we just go by uh, the visual difference that uh, our activities have uh, brought about in this part of the country um initially when we started out there was no water even at 1200 feet there was no water bowels were dry Uh, open wells were dry, and that's the situation uh, in which we we started this NGO. Um, so what we did was, Kaimito has a lot of uh, lakes and what what is lakes, or ponds and uh, uh, village ponds and large lakes as well. And most of them were gone. I would say, I think all of them were gone. They had all become uh, garbage dumps, and then there was hardly any space for the water to come. and then when we were desperate we approached the collector and the collector said okay go ahead i think he was desperate and he said okay do something so that's when we got into it and then uh, we didn't have any time to sit around and uh, uh, talk theory or anything like that we just said okay let's experiment that's the that's how we got into that entire thing and uh, the first water body when we uh, took it up it was encroached half of it was encroached and we had the left whatever was left out of it we uh, we diesel it and uh, mainly what we did was clean the channels the channels are like your nerves like like your blood vessels which bring water to the, bring uh, blood to your heart and today most of the channels most of the streams are all choked and blocked and that, that's one of the reasons uh, why the water doesn't find its way into its into, into the right places so when we clean the channels and the canals uh, this particular water body with just two days of rain it filled up now where did all that water go so what we feel is there is enough and more water it's just that there is no discipline in managing water both in the surface as well as the ground when you see ground water we are indiscriminately drawing a lot of water literally sucking mother earth out it's with so many bowels coimbatore has more lakhs and lakhs of bowels now how much of uh, how much of uh, the extraction can the aquifer take without recharging them we have been uh, extracting a lot of water so i feel it is and then when we started demonstrating there has been no looking back since 2003 when this happened there has been no looking back and uh, we uh, desilted close to about 30 tanks and following our footsteps there lots of youngsters lots of ngos which have come up and started uh, taking up uh, this desilting activity participatory management like you rightly said when i i think it is very very important it's not possible for the government alone to take up the cost of water and today if you think government is going to uh, give you supply all the water that you need no sorry and uh, today probably uh, uh, 
Varun said it's a commodity. But is it going to be available? Is it going to be a commodity that's going to be available if you're going to be indiscriminately misusing and mismanaging it? If you're going to be dumping your garbage into your water bodies, if you're going to let sewage into your water bodies, how are we going to get water? And today, most of the cities are all concretized. Urbanization has, has taken a toll on the water getting into your aquifers and as well as filling your water bodies. So I think it is very, very important that we bring in a lot of discipline and there, there have to be punitive actions uh, initiated. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Look at Israel. Israel, in some of the parts, they have 100 millimeters of rainfall. And with 100 millimeters of rainfall, they have uh, the world's largest agricultural output uh, coming out of the country. And that is happening only because of uh, the government being very stringent in uh, allowing their people to, uh, to manage water, as well as uh, technology. They have used technology to the maximum. I think it's phenomenal how if you can bring in discipline and tie it up with technology, with a lot of data, I think uh, we will not have a water problem at all. I always uh, look up to Israel, the way they manage their water and the way they, they, they with all their water scarcity, they are able to manage uh, their think, water. You have a very valid point. And, uh, India traditionally has been relying mainly on the surface water. Uh, those, some might argue that there's no difference between surface and groundwater. I believe we're close to spent on surface water. And yet uh, we are heavily dependent on groundwater. And 70% of the water that we get is contaminated, as you rightly pointed out, because of untreated sewage. And uh, the water tables in our wells has been increasing, has been decreasing, as you alluded to. So in this context, uh, Varun, uh, how, how do you see the way forward? Yeah, uh, so I think, I think the, the stage is set for, you know, in terms of the problems that we have seen, as well as, you know, what could be the potential solution. And of course, the word sustainability, I would say, is an overused word in some cases, because first of all, we need to understand the problem in depth to even think for a solution. So, I mean, with uh, our understanding, because uh, I mean, when uh, we started uh, our company, you know, we, we, we were started from the IIT Madras, uh, you know, incubation ecosystem and all that. So we had all the, you know, I would say the experts and know-hows and, you know, okay, if you do this, this is the problem, this is the solution. But on the reality on the ground, it was very difficult to get information. Like uh, Vinay was saying, there's no data. So I think that is the first problem that we see to be addressed. You know, today, you know, wonderful uh, communities are built or wonderful buildings are built. You know, there's a German or an Israeli technology for treatment. End of the day, it is operated by, you uh, know, uh, I would say a, a tenth pass guy who would operate it and he has to manage the entire water within the infrastructure. Or, you know, that's a know-how issue that we found that was happening. You know, process engineer would have developed the best treatment plant for the community. But end of the day, it doesn't work after one year and the entire community is dependent on that particular treatment plan to give the right quantity and quality of water. So this is what we found as a major problem because infrastructure are being built everywhere. I mean, if you see residential communities today, you know, the thousand houses, they need uh, on average, you know, about 2 million liters or half a million liter uh, of water to sustain, I mean, for a day. So you can imagine that you know, per house, if they have to get, and they, it is operated by somebody who has literally no information about the treatment process, this, this creates a lot of pressure on communities. So the first problem that we thought has to be uh, created is transparency of usage of water within a building. So where, for how much water we buy, like 200 houses, we need 3 million or 3 lakh liters of water a day. So this is the data that people first has to understand. And the next stage is, okay, uh, you use three lakh liters of water in a day. And uh, out of that, uh, and as per all the books, it says, you know, 80% of that becomes sewage. So what happens to the sewage? Like Madam was saying, and it goes into the drain, I mean, and then finally mixes with the fresh water. So how do you manage this, say the three lakh liter of water and say another two lakh liter of wastewater in a day? So this is the first challenge which we found is there in front of any community or any building 
so I think uh, first stage is to understand what is the quantity. The next is would be like Vinay was mentioning the quality. And then if you discharge onto a ground, uh, if you have a good, uh, you know, treated wastewater, can you discharge it into the ground so that it will recharge your, you know, bore wells or recharge your groundwater. So these are all sustainable solutions, but to achieve that, you know, we need enough data and the experts will be able to solve more problems. So I think first stage of building that infrastructure for collecting data is what I feel, uh, you know, will help go towards that sustainability, the overused word. <laughs> so. No, I think it's very interesting. Also, simplistically put, the solution is reuse by wastewater treatments and uh, aquifer recharge. So that's the big, and then you guys mentioned that there is perhaps a lack of data. Now in India, contemporary India, we see a explosion of smartphones, smartphones and heavy use of drones uh, they has been increasing. So do you see drones and smartphones and how they can be creatively used uh, for awareness building at the community level as well as data generation? Yeah, uh, right. So um, that, that's, a, that's a very good um, uh, question raised um, um, by you, Venkat. Um, so uh, what, what data are we looking at? You know, so everybody is saying that there's no data, you know, but, you know, so if you precisely come and talk, you know, so what data, you know, so uh, on one hand, uh, people are saying that, you know, so we are data overload, you know, so with the amount of data we are able to capture on the smartphones and, uh, you know, the other drones which you mentioned uh, so but whereas uh, uh, the ecosystem should be evolved to capture the more data in some simple method see the two there are two ways of uh, capturing the data one uh, you know so using automated sensors uh, and you know capturing which is a fairly costly uh, you know uh, process and, and you will certainly have to do it at a critical points okay but the non critical points non critical points including maybe capturing the data from uh, simple lakes simple ponds you know uh, farm ponds etc so to understand how my uh, 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 the data how, how my farm farm pond is filling with respect to the time and with respect to the seasons if there is a rainfall of some xyz uh, you know say mm you know, so how much farm pond has actually raised if we can start building some localized solution you know without any sensors you know so where people manually doing this some calculations and then you know so uh, capturing the data I guess that is something very basically where we can start with. Okay, so where uh, with some level of training programs to the NGOs and to the water user associations, if you talk about canals and to some extent to the farmers and the other users on, how can we more quantify the uh, data uh, without having a you know, um, uh, sensors or uh, any automated uh, IoT devices and all. Okay, so simple, if we, if we talk about my household activities, we we do the water uh, calculation only at the end of the month okay so and you know so recently we just started comparing okay so let me compare this with the, my last year july month bill last year may month bill you know trying to compare year on year uh, data whereas uh, my electricity bill they have a very right comparison everything is coming on the smartphone on uh, so uh, in the month of may this is your bill uh, the change in uh, bill compared to the last month last year may is was very clearly visible com completely uh, uh, formalized by the tss pdcl the southern power distribution of telangana and providing us so i was very happy to see such kind of reports completely coming directly from the utilities like that so uh, as a community if we can start driving with some simple uh, mobile apps, simple uh, uh, documents, Excel sheets on how do we track the water data and utilize them in the long run. Okay. Eventually, once we get into the habit of doing this, uh, 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 using this uh, smartphones or else maybe capturing the photograph uh, with a timestamp and uh, GPS coordinates has been very uh, largely used with the phones. Even we do this for the validation purposes uh, uh, for the river water level where uh, the sensor is giving us the data, but you know, so 
the the department always has this doubt you know what is the guarantee that this is the right data you are providing me so you are providing me every 10 minutes data uh, which i even don't want you know so i want one hour data you are providing me 10 minutes data that is fantastic but what is the guarantee that the sensor is giving the right data so i said how does that you want you say i want a manual I, so i'll i'll employ a manual person so then what is the point of having a sensor when you still do a manual data so we started this once in a while validation where uh, uh, we will take the photograph with the time stamp and date uh, and the gps coordinates for the site and compare it with the instrument data so over a period of time they have gained uh, uh, confidence okay fine so now we can completely rely on this data after observing the data for 3 months 6 months and all so similarly maybe uh, uh, since you rightly pointed out uh, 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 people you know not or not all the people who are uh, stakeholders of the water have the in, uh, capacity to invest uh, and buy sensors or you know so any any uh, high value uh, um, items for the for the monitoring and measurement for the data but yes this this simple solutions can uh, can can be a stepping uh, uh, stone to start with where we train people and the community to start capturing the data and take decisions based on the data which we have captured by ourselves if we can if we can empower the community to collect the data and incentivize them whoever collect more data points you know so we will get some incentives or some some form of recognition i guess these are some very small uh, steps uh, uh, you know we can take uh, using using the using the simple available uh, smartphones uh, venkat varun you have any thought Yeah, I think uh, I mean we have uh, fortunately had experience of uh, you know uh, like getting a problem in front of us and then uh, solving that uh, like you know in Karnataka there was uh, you know all these lakes were burning in in 2017 so the government had come up with uh, you know uh, grand challenges where they were looking for startups would which will quantify the amount of water that is being discharged into the lakes which are untreated so the untreated wastewater was the source for the lakes to burn so i i think uh, uh, then the question was how do we understand how much of untreated water is going into these lakes so we were fortunate to work with the bangalore pollution control board so which uh, i mean bwssb and all these teams and uh, basically uh, we said okay we'll measure quality and quantity of the discharge water that goes into the lake so that actually has come to a point where when you start restoring the lakes you know you start getting the quantity of i mean i would say water that can be reused Uh, within the building because all the lakes you know are getting untreated sewage from say there's a huge apartment with 1000 houses you know one day they don't treat they they get almost 1 lakh liter or, or almost 5 uh, lakh liters of water into the lakes so this is a big problem and you can imagine the number of developments that has happened so here how do we use technology so of course drones uh, will give you an overall idea of you know how you know blackish your lake is and can give you an overall sense so that's one way of looking at it but further we developed some simple sensors that would send the data so today you know we have 100 plus sewage treatment plants which have installed uh, the monitoring devices that we have developed and again this development happened along with the government so i think what is really required in the core field i mean to solve the problem so now even the you know uh, communities are kind of aware that i am not polluting the lakes earlier the communities and after it started burning communities realized oh acha we you know, we are contributing it and you know media and everything came in and but i think that is something that technology can help and today people have their smartphones they look at our app to see acha we are spending money on quality of water that has been discharged and that water basically is what we are again taking back through the bore wells so i think this awareness and another big problem that uh, we found in most of the communities is what you know after we get difficult i mean uh, during summers they buy water in on in tankers i mean some 60 tankers 40 tankers and then everybody will have an ro at home and this ro after so much difficulty we treat the water provide it inside the house there's an ro again put which will only give you 30% of water and 70 again becomes waste water 70%. So these are all some simple things that needs to be educated to people that you know you are actually uh, you know creating more of waste water. So uh, so these are all problems which we saw but once data starts coming in you know so I I, I, I buy so much of water. So I think that's uh, that's, that's a first a step and um, smartphones are end of the day going to <laughs> show the data. Ma'am uh, Vanita ma'am uh, uh, abroad especially in my previous lives when i was building factories in the us uh, storm water management used to be a 
big focus area. Uh, how do you think, uh, I think, I mean, I don't find that kind of consciousness. I would say there's hardly any consciousness with respect to rainwater harvesting. Well, today, if you look at uh, stormwater drains, we have stormwater, stormwater drains. In the urban scenario, there are there are stormwater drains, but all of them are sewage drains. The sewage is being let into the, because underground sewage uh, uh, drains don't work. So most of the sewage is being let into these uh, stormwater drains. And uh, why not technology? Can we go back to technology and uh, uh, data collection? Reciting. While we talk about data collection and technology, all of that is fine for the urban scenario. Now, going back to the rural areas where the people don't have that kind of smartphones or any kind of access to um, computers and stuff like that, it's all the rural population, agriculture, farmers, and they are struggling. You know, 70% uh, of the water is uh, of the Water is used by, for agriculture. Now, uh, our uh, city, the western part of our city, we have the western guards. And the rain falling in the western guards has to necessarily come down into the city, into the feed the river. Our river, Noyal, yeah. it used to be a perennial river. Not anymore. Why? Because all the streams, all the canals, the, the, uh, uh, the tier two streams, tier one streams, all of them are gone. Most of them are gone. We try to use technology. We try to use sensors to identify those uh, uh, streams. But then, end of the day, what do we do after identifying all that? There has to be action. If it is not going to be uh, married to action, our collection of data and uh, uh, information is just going to be... Uh, uh, it will just go down the drain. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to ensure that first, we'll have to get water in, 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 into our midst and then we start uh, a sort of managing it. Don't you think so? There's so much of water right. in the rural areas, which is not being, the people are ignorant. So mainly it is uh, lack of awareness. I would say lack of awareness is more in the city. In fact, in the rural areas, people are, they have a lot of native knowledge, which now is fast getting eroded because the, the second generation, third generation of farmers are all getting into IT and uh, they're coming and moving to the cities. So all the native knowledge is also getting lost. I think, I, the, I mean, it's, it, as I said, it's it, a very it's complex a issue. A, we cannot deal with it in... Yeah, we cannot deal with it in 50 minutes, but quickly before we uh, approach the end, uh, I know Vinay and Warren's companies are doing excellent work uh, on uh, the glaciers. Uh, uh, I think, I believe uh, uh, the climate changes are playing havoc with the glaciers and some of the glaciers in uh, we've seen in the recent past, uh, some of the uh, um, adverse effects of these uh, glacier meltdowns. So would you like to throw some uh, uh, light on what, how the government can tackle this in a long uh, way? Vinay? Uh, sorry, I just missed the last point. Uh, I mean, for what, could, what should be the government's long-term uh, vision in terms of glacier management? Right, right, yes. So uh, uh, the glaciers uh, have also been one of uh, the major uh, uh, monitoring points uh, for, for us in, in, in terms of the climate change. But if you look at it, uh, in India, uh, the glaciers are only being monitored or managed by a few research organizations. Some IITs have been working on it. So it has, it has never come to uh, any commercial scale as such, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, one thing which we have been working uh, uh, with the Central Water Commission on this, uh, uh, not exactly the glacier monitoring, but monitoring the outcome of the glacier melt. You know, so we have uh, installed some sensors on the river Ganges, uh, uh, just just below the Himalayan belt, where uh, we monitor the rise in water levels. Uh, around the year. So uh, usually in this, uh, uh, the, in the Himalayan belt, the, the summers give us a lot of water because of the glacier melts. And though we have collected a lot of data for the last two, two and a half years, you know, so we 
have not nobody have used this data specifically for uh, to monitor what is the F, what has been the effect on the glaciers because of this data we have a fair chance to analyze this data and come up with some level of analysis on how the glaciers are changing or you know melting over the period of time so i guess uh, i feel the government should give more research opportunities to the uh, you know so fellow uh, academic institutions and try to bring more private organizations into this where collection of the data and utilization of the data should be completely independent where incentivize people to start collecting the data okay so this is where uh, 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 one thing which we have also been working on is can we independently collect the data and sell this data you know so if you look at uh, some some uh, organizations like skymet okay so skymet has come evolved as a, a very major competitor for imd itself you know so indian meteorological department so can something be uh, evolved in the field of water okay so though the though the government is responsible for uh, doing this but can i build the ecosystem in such a way that uh, my private organizations or you know so individuals can start collecting the data and then you accumulate the data at central point and then you know so you monetize uh, uh, the the people who are collecting the data it's more like a data aggregation um, uh, in the water sector is something which private people have a scope but uh, as as we see there are some policies uh, which are very much uh, uh, sensitive towards the data collection in the water specifically in the rivers which are flowing out of the country uh, so they call it as a classified data the ganges brahmaputra rivers uh, uh, since they flow out of the country collecting the data on this has been marked as a classified data i don't know <laughs> why why they call it classified because i can you know if if i if i really want to collect the data i can i can sit on the banks and you know so start collecting the data 365 days and nobody can stop me doing that somehow we need to evolve these policies in such a way that they are user friendly they are uh, citizen friendly and incentivize people on this collecting the data is what the government role should be i feel uh, the current government also uh, broadly the vision is not to do the business but to do the for the governance we are not in the business of business but we are in the business of governance has been the attitude which is clearly visible from the government so i'm just expecting uh, uh, some some um, uh, spill over of that will come to the water sector where the government start withdrawing uh, uh, from from more of uh, the business activities and you know so focus only on the governance activities by incentivizing the citizens and the uh, uh, the organizations uh, you know so to do more work on the For 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 a, for a better management of the water. Thank you. So one uh, last uh, question to you, ma'am. You mentioned about uh, rural communities and the. Uh, Indian context, uh, especially as one of the uh, uh, strong mechanisms for businesses to. impact uh, the community based water project so how do you see uh, for them intervention in inter uh, role for them in intervention such as check check dam building and rain water harvesting would you want to throw some work uh, that i believe your organization is also involved right yes. uh, now basically uh, sponsoring uh, such activities we follow one mantra that which was taught to us by dr rajinder singh the water man of india and uh, he said where the water runs make it walk where it walks make it stand stand in water bodies and where it stands make it sit in the lap of mother earth so simple and uh, that is what our ancestors were doing so if i think we need to construct a lot more uh, check dams and rain water harvesting uh, because there's a lot of water that is wasted in transit if we are able to harvest rain water through uh, through even your bowel shafts we have been doing we, uh, we have constructed more than 750 rainwater harvesting structures in and around the uh, climate wow. and uh, the results are phenomenal where we did not have water in areas where there was no water at 1200 feet we have water at 200 feet and 300 feet so that goes to show that if you if we are able to effectively harvest the rainwater and another important uh, source of water is your rooftops every house can have a rooftop rainwater harvesting a phenomenal amount of water that can be saved can be used for drinking because it's clean you don't know what kind of water we get in our uh, 
in you know in your corporation term. So that is uh, that is something that we have to think long term, and then it is implementable. Dif difficult, but once you get into it, and then you realize that you have water in your hands, you won't let it go. Absolutely. I don't see there are any questions in the chats. Uh, uh, if anybody wants to raise questions, they're free. Al alternatively, if there are no questions, then I would ask uh, you all to say what would be your three recommendations for the communities or the governments, all the stakeholders, corporates, uh, in terms of business opportunities, what to do your three recommendations probably one minute each so we'll be in time Varun you want to go yeah okay yeah I think uh, you know I think this was a, a discussion where we I mean the climate change issue is also a big problem so I think uh, you know what I would uh, uh, I mean when I think about the entire uh, ecosystem I think there is need for more uh, uh, I would say, it can be called as startups or people who are passionate about the space to come in and uh, look at the problem and then figure out solutions. Because I think this is a space where, you know, uh, I mean, if I have a solution, I can't just go uh, blind itself. It's all, it's all involvement of different stakeholders. So I think one is we need to have more people in the space. It could be young entrepreneurs who are interested to build companies out there, <clears throat> or it could be, you know, I mean, of course, investors who would like to invest in the space to find out better solutions. So I think this is one very important aspect I feel should happen. Second, I think in terms of government, uh, we have had uh, in the last five years opportunities to work with multiple governments uh, to solve this problem. I think government is just an enabler. Uh, you know, a government has to just play that role. I mean, recently, you know, we have uh, been part of the Jal Jeevan mission uh, for uh, you know, digitalizing the villages to send the data, and we've uh, deployed our solution in 25 villages. What I realized here is that you know, technology is not the problem, but an enabler like government should, you know, uh, look at the scale at which we can solve this problem. So I think uh, for that, again, the first point of having more companies or more 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 people who are passionate about this space should come forward. And thirdly, I think uh, sustainability is a is a word that you know we can achieve. Uh, you know, once we know the problem and we are clear about the solution. So I think I think that's the three points I would like to share here. Thank you. Well summarized. Uh, Vinay. Yeah, so undoubtedly the first uh, point raised by Varun, uh, you know, so, so, so goes even for the first on my list, you know, so we need more uh, uh, innovators, uh, you know, so entrepreneurs or the NGOs, uh, you know, so who are committed to solve this problem, you know, so this, this is, this is not a one man show or, you know, not, not a, a few people show, you know, so it, it needs a moment, you know, so close, close to maybe, uh, you know, so another independence struggle the India had, you know, so that's, that's the kind of a moment we are, when, when we are in uh, talking about sustainability or environment or water all together. So uh, I guess, uh, uh, you know, so the, um, the the ecosystem is building towards it, you know, so the glad this events like uh, the Sanitai Sustainable, Sustainability Summit uh, are also part of this. Uh, I very strongly uh, see this. Second, I uh, uh, would like to highlight a little bit on the sensitizing, uh, sen uh, sensitizing uh, the community on the water, you know, because we had a lot of uh, respect for the water, you know, so people, you know, so not very far, you know, so the just the one generation before, you know, so the, our parents, uh, grandparents, you know, so till there, you know, so people do respect water, you know, so when, when, when you go to the river, you wash your hands, you wash your feet, and then, you know, so put your, uh, uh, some water on the top of your head. So I do not see that respect for the water in this current generation, which is one of the major uh, uh, a loop, a missing loop, which I am seeing passing on from the generations. I don't know where I'm still find, trying to figure out where we missed it. So, but having a respect and sensitivity for the uh, uh, resource, a natural resource, uh, limited. The uh, non-renewable uh, natural resource is something which has gone missing. So I guess we need to sense it. Not we don't want them to you know so touch and wash the feet, but polluting, abusing the resource is something which we need to stop. So I guess these are the two submissions uh, uh, from our side, from my side, uh, as part of this. Ma'am, uh, I think uh, people who are working in the space of water, NGOs, it could be innovators, whoever, 
I think they need to be recognized, not recognized in the sense they have to be helped, supported. Because I can tell you stories about how the challenges that we face, because it's a new field and not many people are there. So we've had a lot of challenges convincing the, the government that this is possible and it, this should be done. And second thing is, I know it might sound a little wild, but instead of saying corporate social responsibility, it has to be corporate water responsibility. I think industries use so much of water. Yeah. Right? And then if I'm going to, because there are enough people who are helping in the healthcare space, education, so on and so forth. Water, water is everyone needs. It's healthcare, it's only a certain portion of the people who are sick. Education is again a, a certain section, but water is something everyone needs. So I think that has to be a corporate water responsibility or a citizen's water responsibility, I mean, a civic's water responsibility. Where uh, people pitch in big time and uh, NGOs working in the space, the water, space of water, I think should be given more support and uh, encouragement. I think the message is loud and clear. Uh, the business opportunity as an opportunity to solve problems and in terms of offering solutions, water is an area or a canvas which is wide open. Uh, I think that's a welcome uh, uh, sign. And I'm sure more entrepreneurs like you would come into this space, including the corporates using their water responsibility. <laughs> Uh, uh, with that, thank you. It's been a pleasure having you all. I know it's a very complex uh, topic, but uh, you've been able to answer many of the questions for the people who have been attending this session. Thank you all. And over to you, Samira, or uh, Frames. Thank you. Thank Samira. You. Thank you. Thank you.